turns around and looks at her like her keys in the door. She knows her keys were gone. And she hears knocking at her door. Isn't there anyone who knows what Christmas is all about? That's not roasting. Jack Frost nipping at your nose. So I'm offering. What is up, Miramore Gang? It's your girl, Bianca Shanice, and I'm back with another video. If you're new here, hello. And if you're a returning subscriber, welcome back. Also, please don't forget to hit like, comment, and subscribe. And please don't forget to hit that notification button so you can get alerts when your girl posts a new video. Cause what? Cause what? Cause how y'all gonna see me? Hmm. Today's video, I will be doing a story time plus mukbang. And if that is something that you would like to see, please stay tuned and keep on watching. This is Vlogmas Day 10. We have snow crabs and we have jerk shrimp. I think that's what it's called. Jerk shrimp. Just have me brand watermelon for the drink. What is up, man? More gang. How have y'all been? We have a juicy story time today. So what's been going on, you guys? How have y'all been enjoying Vlogmas? I've been enjoying Vlogmas. Although it is tiring some days. Some days are better than others. As y'all can see for this month bone, I did not do no makeup. We're going to get real dirty, hands and all, slurping, coughing, sneezing, all that type of stuff. So we're going to go ahead and jump into the story time, okay? So the story time we have today, actually watched it on the ID channel, ID Go. I got the app on my TV. It's from the series Obsession, Dark Desires. <clears throat> Y'all, this story time is better than last time. Woo! Obsession, Dark Desires, The Good Neighbor, Season 5, Episode 1. So the first person I'm going to introduce to you all is this lady. Her name is Bailey. Bailey was going to school for cosmetology. She wanted to do hair. Bailey ended up graduating from school two years later. So on this one particular day, Bailey, she went to the mall on break, on her lunch break. Bailey then meets her soon-to-be boyfriend. They fell in love, got married, and Bailey ended up getting pregnant. Y'all, these crabs are on point. They season well. So, baby love being married. But there was also some financial issues. And it was hard for Bailey and her husband. So, then, they both decided that they would get a divorce and remain friends. So, on another particular day, Bailey gets a phone call from one of her good friends and tells her that she is getting ready to be a, a director at this new hair school and she would like for Bailey to come and work for her. And also, y'all, where Bailey was living, 
from her from the new job that she was offered it was a little distance from where she was currently living so she ended up going apartment hunting shopping around looking for somewhere to stay that was closer so it wouldn't take um so much time for her to get to work and she wanted to make it easier um for her for her and her son so bailey actually came across this townhouse that was available for rent she calls the landlord and she asked the landlord about the place and she tells her that it's available and that the previous tenant was a single mom just like Bailey was and that she just ended up leaving one day and just left her high and dry. And so she's open to renting the apartment now. So Bailey was thinking like, oh, that's cool. You know, I'm a single mom too, da da da. And she, you know, she accepted the, um, the offer to move into the townhouse. So Bailey also noticed that the people in the neighborhood that she was getting ready to move to, that she had moved to, she knew that, um, she noticed that they was Mormon and her husband wasn't. She also noticed that she had a neighbor who lived directly beside, beside her, y'all. So how the apartment is set up is like, this is, a, this is the door. This is a door, so they was right beside. Like, if she come out her door, you come out her door, and they turn to each other, they can be, like, right there. They didn't really have much porch space. So there's really no privacy on the porch. So as she, you know, going inside the house, she noticed a man sitting on the porch, and it's her neighbor. And his name is Tony. So we have Bailey, and we have Tony. And Tony was an older guy. He was... Uh, roughly probably about what 65 she also stated that Tony was very friendly and that he also seemed kind of lonely as she you know getting herself settled she ended up enrolling her son in school and the school that she enrolled her son in she can't became friends with the principal there they became real good friends Okay, y'all, so this is where the story about to get interesting. Um, Bailey is at six months now. She's been living in her apartment for six months. Bailey is living at the house and is getting ready to go to work. As she goes outside, she noticed she has a flat tire. So then her neighbor Tony comes up from behind her and was like hey you know is everything okay what you got going on he said it seems like it looks like your tires flat and she was like yeah i don't know what happened so he was like well do you need any help he was like where's your dad and so she's like yeah i do need some help and she said um that her dad had passed away So, so then Tony decides to offer Bailey a ride to work. And she just felt that, you know, the neighborhood was safe. Tony was very friendly. And it just gave her a reassurance that, you know, everything was going to be okay. And she agreed to let Tony take her to work. She also asked him, since he took her to work, could he pick her up from work? And so he was like, yeah, um, just take my number down um, just in case, you know, so you can contact me. So she did that. So once they both made the agreement of him taking her to work and picking her up, she decides to offer to give him a free haircut since she you know she does hair he comes in to get his haircut done one day 
So when Bailey was wrapping up, um, about when Bailey was finished with cutting um Tony's hair out, you know, she asked me, you know, how do you like it? How did you enjoy your service? Bailey says, Tony just turns around and looks at her like this. This is Tony just turns around like this. And just stares at her. And she was like, are you okay? She was wondering, like, was everything okay? Like, what's going on? She just really thought that was weird. It definitely made her feel uncomfortable. So, you know, Bailey is approaching seven months since she had moved in. Matter of fact, it's actually Easter time. And she said when she got up that morning, she noticed that she had a car attached to her door. The car said, thank you for being my best friend. God bless you. Best friends forever. Tony. So in that moment, she's thinking like, best friends? Bro, you're my neighbor. Like, what is happening here? You know, she thought that was kind of weird and strange. So that happened. So when that happened, Bailey decides to call her landlord and tell her landlord about it. And she said her landlord just laughed. Well, you're pretty. You can dress. Um, he probably thinks you're hot. Um, nothing to worry about. You know, he's one of my best tenants. He actually been staying in their, con in their um, apartment for seven years. So, you know, Bailey, you know, she listened to her and, you know, she didn't think nothing else of it. God, that's how I always start off. Just can't be so sure, people. So now, y'all, we at seven and a half months since she had moved in that apartment. Bailey said it was one night. She was already in the bed asleep. It was like 11 o'clock. And she hears knocking at her door. So she's like, it's 11 o'clock at night, Where it is. They're gonna have to wait and contact me in the morning. Or if it's that much of an emergency, they'll call me or something. So, you know, she just ignored it. Tried to anyway. <sighs> the person kept knocking, kept knocking. Mind y'all, they said 11 o'clock at night. She's home alone. Just her and her son. And somebody's knocking at her door. So, she gets up, goes, she goes downstairs. In that moment, she already felt a little weird about it because it's late. And she's thinking to herself, like, should I go ahead and call the police? And so she was like, who is it? Y'all, it's Todd. Mm. He got a package. Boy, what you doing trying to give me a package at 11 o'clock at night? You gonna go watch your business? He had a package for her. So baby like, okay, I'll just get it in the morning, you know. I don't know this man like that for me just be, you know, opening up my door to him at 11 o'clock at night. Y'all, Tony didn't like that. He continued to bang and bang and bang. So baby like, uh-uh, we ain't about to do this tonight. So she was like, I'm about to call the police. So she... Call the police. I don't blame her. Cause she already by herself with her son. 
and it's late ain't no telling what you know he was gonna do or what he was thinking and she also stated it made her feel uncomfortable and he was talking talk about he was trying to be a good neighbor you trying to be a good neighbor at 11 o'clock at night you in here banging on my door i'm in here with my son and you banging on my door talking about saying you got a package but then when the police get here you talking about you trying to be a good neighbor Oh, it's it, it just I can just get worse from here. So now, y'all, she had eight months now at staying at that place. <clears throat> so one morning again, she gets up, <coughs> getting ready, you know, to get in her car, and she noticed that she has yet another flat tire so in that moment bailey already felt like it was tony because he has been doing a lot of <clears throat> weird shady stuff lately she was like oh you know i'm not about to go in there and ask him to give me a ride <clears throat> so she ends up calling her friend actually the her son's principal <laughs> she ended up calling him and ask him could he give her a ride and so you know he came over there and picked her up he like agreed like he gets like weird vibes and everything just something ain't right you know with that whole situation and that man she also stated in the summertime tony would leave gifts on her porch Every month. Every month he would leave a gift on her porch. She was like, that is really awkward. Like, why is he constantly, like, leaving stuff on my porch? She was just thinking, like, everything that was going on with that man was weird. Now, y'all, baby is at 10 months now that living, that, living in that town home. So, another day... Bailey pulls up home, her and her son. She's walking up to her front door. And she noticed pink chalk writing on her front door. And it says, pray for forgiveness. So she felt like Tony had done it. So she got his number. She texted him and said, did you do this? And he's talking about something. No. So she calls the police again. And at this point, she was just like, y'all need to do something about him. He's harassing me. He's doing this. He's doing that. Y'all not doing nothing. It seemed like you got to be about to before they want to um do something. I don't know if I can say that up here because I don't want you to, to, you know, flag my channel. But, you know what I mean? You know, you got to be about like that before they can do something, which is not okay. The police get there. You know, she showed them everything. Of course, you know, they ask him. He denies it. And, um... Then he tells the police he just trying to be a good neighbor. No, he tells the police that he is a good man. Like, he innocent. He don't be doing none of this stuff that she is accusing him of. And the police couldn't do nothing because he didn't commit a crime. So, they end up leaving. And she was like, well, yeah, I'll call you again if something else pop up. Mm. Y'all look at this meat. Bailey actually felt unsafe at that point because it was like, I'm calling the police. I'm calling my landlord. Nobody is knowing anything about this man. She didn't want to stay there anymore. She hate coming home. Actually, around that time, her renewal 
her lease was about to be up. And she stated, ain't no way I'm renewing this lease. I'm getting up out of him. So now y'all, we 13 months in. The holidays coming up. And Bailey just felt like she just needed to get away from with all that stuff that's been going on at home. And, you know, she wouldn't be surrounded by family and stuff like that. So when she comes back, it's at nighttime. And loading the stuff out the car, you know, putting stuff in the house, going to the car, you know, going back and forth. And so when... She left her keys. She, when she did that, she left her keys in the door. And so when she was going back into the house, she noticed her keys were gone. And she was just like, I know I didn't take them out. My car keys up there. My house keys up there. My mailbox keys up there. Like, all my keys up there. And she knew that she put them keys in that door and them keys weren't in that door no more and she felt like Tony had done it so she ended up calling her landlord <coughs> ended up calling her landlord telling her about that and so after a couple of days she didn't think nothing else of it we had 13 and a half months so at this point baby like Bruh, I got to move. I can't stay here. I can't keep doing this. So her and her friend, which is the principal, and her son, they go, you know, looking for apartments. A lot of the apartments that was within her budget, the deposit was too high. And she just didn't know where she was going to be able to come up with getting that lump sum of money for the deposit. So... She really didn't have any luck with finding an apartment. And so, you know, her friend was just like, you know, um, don't give up. You're going to eventually find something. You're going to find something. Y'all, why that same day when her and her friend and her son comes back home, she pulls up to her house. And she has, it actually, y'all, at this time, is like around Thanksgiving time or a couple days before Thanksgiving. She got a whole turkey sitting on her porch in a bag. So she gets out of the car, her and her friend. And, you know, she's going to go see what it was. And when she said it was, when she, you know, she said it was a turkey. She picked that bag up and threw it in the trash. And, you know... She just still felt like she could, couldn't do anything. He was still harassing her and everything. And so, mind y'all, while her and her friend out there talking, he out there peeping out the window looking at them. She said he was always peeping out the window looking at her, listening to her conversations with her family and her friends. Even was showing like it was a possibility you know like how you see this wall back wall i got basically like he was putting his ear to like say if he was my neighbor and he was putting his ear to my to the wall trying to listen out for whatever i'm saying or whatever my whatever i'm doing they was showing like it was like that intense bailey has been living there 14 months one particular morning, I think it was Christmas morning, her and her son was heading out. When she opened her front door, a microwave and toys. I can understand the toys, but a microwave? Do you feel the heat? I wonder, like, did he feel like she need a microwave? I don't know, that was weird when she said a microwave. But... Of course, her son, you know, seen the toys and was reaching for him. She was like, "No, no, honey, don't um, don't touch any of this stuff. We not touch any of it." And she threw it away. Reason being why 
she didn't want her son to you know get too comfortable with you know receiving gifts and stuff and toys from him because it would leave Tony to feel like it's okay for him to constantly keep doing it which she already told him to stop doing it he always he was already doing things that made her feel uncomfortable and she didn't want to give him any type of reasons to feel like what he was doing was okay because it wasn't okay to her y'all so now Bailey is at 15 months it's been 15 months since she has moved in that townhouse all that stopped all the toys all him bothering her everything has stopped it had actually it was on Christmas day or sometime around Christmas time when he had left the microwave and the toys stopped that day until the middle of January he wanted to start his mess back up again so yet again nevertheless she pulls up home at night again and y'all it's a ladder in front of her window a tall ladder just sitting in front of her window and so she's looking like what well, is maintenance doing something like what is going on and so y'all as they showing it they showing her getting out the car going in the house i'm like girl don't go in the house but she proceeds to go in the house and she kind of like was looking around and then she decides to call the police and the police no she decides to call her landlord and the landlord was like you know call the police calls the police and the police tells her um that's between you and your landlord so she calls her landlord back and tells her landlord that the police tells her that it's a you and I problem. Um, she was just like, she can't take this anymore. Um, she needs to, um, she's moving out. She need to do something about her lease because she's ready, to, you know, she can't take it anymore. And her landlord like, that she was going to evict Tony because you've been going through too much, you know, with him in this whole situation. So in that exact moment, after she got the phone with the landlord, she goes online and start looking up protection orders. And all the stuff that was listed was things like um, husbands, boyfriends, nothing dealing with neighbors. Nothing that she felt like that could help her. So she just felt like she was just at a dead end yet again. Now y'all, Bailey is at 15 and a half months since she moved into that townhouse. And one day, again, it's always a day, Bailey comes home. When she pulls up home, she notices it's a rocking chair with a bear sitting in it. <sighs> At this point, she like, I, she, I done had it. Like, she has done had it, and she has had it up to here. Like, uh-uh, get somebody else to do it. I can't deal with this no more. Chair and the bear and trash it. Bailey go and confront Tony and just let it all out. Just let him have it. She wanted him to be scared of her in that moment, in that moment, in that exact moment. She wanted him to feel like I'm in control of myself. I'm in control of this. You're not gonna control me no more. So, all this is like, you know, happening in in the middle of January. The stuff was taking place, you know, in January. So, in that exact moment, he completely leaves her alone. From February to March, he leaves her alone. So, yet again, one morning, 5.30 in the morning to be exact, Bailey is woken up from her alarm, 5.30 in the morning. And when she, you know, trying to come to, she hears a noise in the hallway. And so she yells out, you know, calling her son's name, and asking you know is that you and so you know she's still trying to get herself together and honey here come tony walking his happy jack behind in that in that woman's room in her room y'all he is in this woman's house mind y'all when he goes in her room he's standing there with the in his hand Trash bags, zip ties, all that in his hand. So she looks at him like, what are you doing here? What are you doing? He points this at her and tells her to shut up. 
You know, just kept calling her all out her name and stuff like that. He, you know, pointing this at her and telling her to shut up. He gets closer to her and he takes this and pistol whip her across her head. Yo, you hear that cat? Anyways, you know, they going back and forth, tussling and whatever. Um, she ended up, you know, falling on the ground. And she was just like, she, I have to fight. I have to fight. I got to go two-piece him. You know, I got to fight. Fighting for my life. He looks at her and tells her that she ruined his life. And she was an evil be a, you know, you know, be a be a. She was a, a evil be a be a. He just kept bashing her in her head. Just kept bashing her in her head. And then eventually he stopped. Once she saw that he had stopped doing that, she pulled herself together and gathered some strength. And, you know, she kind of, like, mushed him and was doing stuff to him. And she was able to get up and run downstairs. And, honey, she when I say she was running down them stairs, she was getting down them stairs, she was getting up out of there. And once she got downstairs, she made it to open the front door. And she was, like, halfway out that door. He caught up with her and grabbed her and pulled her back in the house. And slammed the door. Once he slammed the door, she hear her son yell out, Mom, Mom. And she was like, Go back in your room, honey. Don't come out. Tony broke in here. So her son stayed upstairs. And so, y'all, at that point, this lady is tired. She feel like she ain't got no more fight in her. She just felt so helpless at this point. He takes this, aims it at her head while she's laying down on the ground. She's noticed him putting his finger on the trigger and actually pulling the trigger. And this jams. Woo! Y'all, I was a little scared when I was listening to this. Because it was not like scared, but it was like, huh, I felt like I was watching an actual movie. I was like, you know, this is serious. You know, how you point this at her and it jams up on her on you. And so all she could think about was like. Who God, you know, thank you, you know, you know, just cover me and just save me and, and you know, you know, I don't want to die. And so in that moment when he noticed that, he takes this and point it to the ground and put his finger on the trigger and press it. And it works. That won't nobody but God on her side, honey. That won't nobody but God. That won't nobody but God on her side. Because she could have been, but it jammed. At that point, Tony drops the, and go gets her a blanket, wraps her up, and says he's sorry. Then he calls 911 and said that, they, that he needed an ambulance because a lady has been hurt. He ended up telling them what he done. He hung up the phone. And then they say, you know, you hear the police knocking on the door. They saying, open up, let us in. And then in that mo moment, Tony picks this back up, runs upstairs, and she heard, ah! And she was like, she knew that he himself. You know, she was still kind of going in and out. It was kind of foggy. She said her son standing over her, and honey, that lady was blessed. Whew. For that, the jam like that, and then when he pointed the other way, and it go all, whoo, honey. That won't nobody but God, honey, on her side. Whoo, it won't her time. Mm, that was a blessing. That was a word for somebody right there. Mm. Whoo, just be grateful. You know, cherish, you know, every moment of our lives, you know, because tomorrow is not promised. But it's so sad that you can nearly be bounced. You have she did it's so sad that, that lady had to go through all of that. And it's it still feels seem like she really didn't get no justice because, you know, what he did. You know, she had to go through all that stuff in order to feel free. And I know she felt bad because I'm sure she didn't want the man to, you know, what he did to herself she didn't want that to happen she just wanted him to leave her alone and she wanted the police and people to do something about it she wanted to feel like she mattered whatever you know all the stuff that she was going through she want she wanted to feel like she mattered somebody to help help her out take care of the situation don't wait until it get to a point like this for y'all to actually step in i shouldn't have to be almost nearly about 
for you to want to do something like it's so crazy that we live in a world like this and it's scary too and some of the pictures that they showed like you know she had bruises you know it was blood you know all over her house and i can imagine you know her you know her son you know being traumatized and stuff like you know you just gotta be careful you know wherever we are wherever we stay because everybody is not for us everybody don't have good intentions and they were saying that he went in with the intent to you know harm her have this trash bags body bags whatever you want to call them trash bags ties tape stuff like that he went in the intent to you know harm her hurt her you know i just hate that she had to go through all that for her to get somewhat of justice you know but that was her story but that story was really interesting i really enjoyed that story that wraps up for my story time today i hope you guys enjoyed it if you have any questions y'all chime in the comments let me know how y'all feel about this story time this time let me know if you have seen it if you are going to try and watch it um like i said i watch it on the id channel and the um series is called obsession dark desires and it's um season five episode one please don't forget to hit like comment and subscribe and please don't forget to hit that notification button so you get alerts when your girl posts a new video because what because what because i'm sure i'm gonna see me and i will see you guys in another video goodbye